One of the ways is, of course, through projects. And they can also be very small pilot projects. But for FAO to be involved, it means it brings the prestige of the United Nations international level work where the FAO works with ministries of agriculture, ministries of food, ministries of land and so forth. And that sort of also raises the opportunities of the indigenous peoples to be there at policy making levels. So it's very important to do project work. And the other thing that FAO can facilitate is dialogues. The indigenous peoples policy, the voluntary guidelines that are there, that these are important stakeholders. And just to facilitate, we do not expect the FAO to be talking about indigenous peoples' rights. The peoples will do it themselves. But just to facilitate uh, processes, meetings, so that indigenous peoples are not forgotten. Well, one of the things is, as my colleague said, capacity building. Now, capacity building of not just the indigenous peoples, their organizational strengths have to be increased, but also capacity building of the FAO itself and other UN agencies. Sometimes agencies do not work with each other, do not talk with each other. So that capacity building is absolutely crucial at the national levels for both FAO, other UN agencies and indigenous peoples. I think the most important contribution that they will bring in and they bring in is sustainable agriculture, sust sustainable forest use, sustainable water resources use. And uh, you will see that in many countries, uh, agriculture has gone forward, sometimes in a quantitative manner. So you have food security, but you do not have nutritional security. And it is indigenous peoples who bring all that traditional knowledge, traditional ecosystem management, which has been acknowledged in the, the uh, uh, World Conference on Indigenous Peoples. So they bring these on board and we also need to remember that a lot of the agriculture policies are based upon the earlier FAO work of the 1960s where you only looked at uh, product production increasing product production without looking at the species and other needs of that economy or the country. So we have to bring on board all those other developments in the case of agriculture, forestry, fisheries, resource management, which were left out. And of course, FAO can do that by promoting its own policies, but indigenous peoples actually show on the ground how they actually dealing with these issues and these sectors in a sustainable way through their own traditional knowledge and innovations. The voluntary guidelines are a medium, they are the documents through which indigenous peoples' uh, land and resource rights can be achieved, but we also have to be very careful that where the standard of rights, you have other instruments which are of a higher level. They can be United Nations uh, declarations or treaties or even national law, or agreements between the indigenous peoples and their governments that the standard does not go low but of course, for what it is worth, the policy and the voluntary guidelines should be used to, to uh, secure indigenous people's rights over the lands and uh, natural resources. And also, of course, as any other citizens to contribute to the national economy and development.